The edge width tool can be used to measure the distance between two detected edge points. This tool can be found in the dimensions geometry tool category under the measure width subcategory. In the function list, it is also known as edge width. This tool can be used to measure a diameter or other dimensions of a target. We'll go ahead and add this tool from the function list. The first step with any tool setup is to perform the image registration. What this will do is store a reference image in the program settings that you can use to set up the tool. So all you need to do is run some parts under the camera, and then when you have the part that you want to be your master part or reference image, go ahead and click register, and it will save the image. The next step in the tool setup will be to set up your inspection region. This is the area on the image where you want to perform your measurement. As a default, rectangle is chosen, but you can also choose rotated rectangle if your measurement was at an angle of some sort. Uh, you can rotate the rectangle around. Or if it's a gear where you want to measure in the circular direction, like a notch on a gear, you can also choose ring. Rectangle and rotated rectangle are most common for a linear type of measurement. What we have here is a washer that's backlit. Uh, with a backlight so we can create a nice silhouette and get good contrast and we want to measure the diameter across the center of the washer here. So what I'll do is I'll draw my region and make it scan kind of right across the middle of the part here. So about like that. Once you have your region in the area that you want it, just go ahead and click OK. In the detection conditions you can set up which mode you want to use for the edge width tool. As a default, outer gap is selected, and that will measure the distance between the outer two most edges. So as you can see on this part here, we got four main edges here, and it's just simply measuring the outer distance. You can also choose what's called inner gap for the mode, and what this will do is simply measure the inner two most edges, so the distance between the inner two most edges. So as you can see here, it's now performing the inner diameter of this part. So if that's the measurement we wanted to perform, we could leave it on that. And you can also specify which two edges that you want to measure between. So once you choose specified edges, you can select which is edge 1 and what is edge 2. So if I wanted to measure between edge 0 and edge 1, I could select that. Now the numbering is starts at, it goes in the direction of your scan direction, so we're going left to right. So this is actually edge 0, this first one, then edge 1, 2, and 3. And if you go the opposite direction of the scan, it's numbered in the opposite direction, in negative numbers. So it would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So you could set it accordingly. So that's specified edges. But for this example, we're going to go ahead and leave it on outer gap because we want to do that outermost diameter. If needed, you can adjust any of the other edge detection conditions that you need to set according to the application. Once you have your detection conditions all set, the next step will be to set up your judgment conditions. And this is the pass-fail criteria of the tool. So you can set your upper limit and your lower limit to the measured value. The measured value being displayed will depend on which image you have selected. Right now we're working off the reference image, so it's showing us the measured value. So right now we're getting about 324 pixels as the measured outer diameter. You could also run some actual parts to the system too if you'd like at this point and confirm the different values. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and set the limit off the reference image. So our upper limit, we'll click that field and set it for hmm. about 330 in this example. And again, these limits will depend on your application. So you'll want to run some good parts and bad parts and kind of get an idea of what the good tolerance should be. And we'll set the lower limit at 320. So if our measured value falls outside this range, this upper and lower limit range, the tool will fail. As long as it's within our range, it will pass. You can click OK once the limits are set. Now that the tool is all set up, we can confirm the operation by running some parts. As you can see here, if the measured value falls within our range, our upper and lower limit range, the value is displayed in green and the tool passes OK, turns green. If it falls outside our range, it'll, the value will turn red, the tool will fail, so you get a clear indication of pass and fail. So you can see right here, it fell lower than our lower limit, so it failed. And if we have go if it goes too high, in this example, 340 pixels, it passed our upper limit. So the tool will pass and fail according to your limits. Here is an example of performing an edge width along a circular part, like the notch on a gear. The tool setup is essentially the same, except you use a ring or arc as your inspection region. Everything else is set up the same way. If you're using a ring or arc, 
the measurement is an angular width. So in this example here, you can see the measurement is 21.788. So it's telling us that's a 21.788 degree width, if you will. Just like the earlier example, you would then set your upper and lower limit on that measured angular width according to the application. In summary, the edge width tool is a great way to perform a dimensional measurement between two edges, whether it be an outer diameter of a part, inner diameter of a part, or two specified edges. It can be done in a linear fashion or in a circular fashion, like a notch on a gear.